Connecticut, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. All right, well, my first job was in Willamette, Connecticut. It was 160 bucks before taxes. I get to work one day, and by the way, in Willamette, Connecticut, if everybody's listening, nobody's listening. Anyway, uh, to make a long story short, it was a pretty interesting experience. I first started part-time there, slept on the radio station floor, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night. I took the Bonanza bus from the uh, terminal in New York City. Every time I see a Bonanza bus, I get like a tick. I'm like, <laughs> Bonanza bus. Uh, and by the way, when I say tick, um, after I got a full-time job at that station of Willimantic, WNOU, by the way, the Willimantic of 20 years ago wasn't like the way it is today because of uh, the uh, Mohegan Sun. You know, there it was like crazy. It was like um, the town of Willimantic was, um, everybody at that point worked for American Thread, which manufactured all of the thread for, their, for your clothing nationwide. And that place went out of business. The entire town shut down. It was like a bad movie, that bad car movie where the, where the whole town was. So anyway, here I am. You know, making my 160 bucks uh, a week before taxes. Uh, when I did get that full-time job. One day I show up for uh, my big old afternoon drive shift, and I show up at the radio station after making 160 bucks a week. By the way, um, the station was a freaking dump. It was the worst thing you'd ever seen. Um, it made, let me think about this. It made the garbage gondola outside look like a welcoming place to work. It was really bad. So. The whole time I'm doing the afternoon drive show, I'm itching my ankles. I'm like, I, I don't know, maybe I'm nervous being on air. I don't get it. My ankles itch for months. I'm not kidding. One day I show up for my big old afternoon drive shift in Willamette, Connecticut, and I see two dudes arguing in front of the radio station door. And I'm like, you know, walking towards them, trying to figure out what's going on. And when I get close enough, I realize this is a big chain on the radio station door. Zito, no flip phone allowed. <laughs> Booty bandito right there. Um, there's a big chain on the radio station door, and I'm like, huh? What's going on? Um, <laughs> it's the bank person trying to repo. This is true. The bank person trying to repo the radio station cart machines and reel-to-reels because they defaulted on the last payment they got fucking pissed. That's a, I'm taking your shit. And he was arguing, this is true, I'm not making this up. I'm not embellishing this at all. He was arguing with somebody from the Connecticut Health Department saying, I'm sorry, you can't go in the building. It's quarantine for flea infestation. I'm like, shit! That's why I've been itching. So that, that was my first uh, full-time radio job. Very unlike um, the Big Z89 here. You know, um, that's why I'm a little freaked out up here. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing up here? You know, I never had the experiences that uh, you guys had here. It's quite interesting. How fucked up is Willamette, Connecticut, by the way? <laughs> Let me tell you. This is true. Wifey, hi wifey. My wife over there, Kathy, say hi. We're watching some dumb movie on TiVo. This is about five years ago or something like that. Um, and this is a bumper for uh, 60 minutes. And, it, and the, uh, the, the news guy goes, the most strung out place in, in America. It's not where you think. And I stop the TV, I go, well, let me think that. <laughs> True story, Willamette, Connecticut. She's like, huh? I'm like, you'll see. 45 minutes later, you know, we're watching ends, the news guy comes on, the most strung out place in North America. Willamette, Connecticut. <laughs> the most strung out place in North America is not where you think it's, and he's standing under a, a Route 6 sign in Willamette, Connecticut. <laughs> Based on the fact that the American Thread Company went out of place, everybody became a drug addict, they, had, they didn't leave talent, they didn't know what to do, they just stayed there and got strung out, collected welfare and whatever else. Flannel never went away, by the way. You thought the grunge movement in the 90s came from Seattle? Uh-uh. Came from Willamette, Connecticut. Grunge galore. Um, and the news 
newscast is on. And the most strung out place is Wallabanta, Connecticut, and the epicenter of well, the, the most of, of, of all the drug dealing is. And I stop, I stop it again, I go, Hotel Hooker. And she goes, Hotel Hooker? How do you know? And I go, as they're zooming in for the shot, I go, because I slept in that illegal apartment store window. <laughs> That's, that was my first full-time radio job. This is true. Yeah, so um, I worked uh, after that. At about uh, that point, maybe 15, 20 other toilet bowls, as I used to call them. They were toilet bowls. Um, and eventually I sent a tape to uh, the station that was referenced earlier, who were nice enough to let me go four times. Uh, but at first, this was my first hire. I sent a huge orange envelope. And I got a call the next day. I sent the absolute antithesis of what I was told to do. Send your resume on nice white paper. You know, be professional. I sent, I'm not kidding, uh, a huge, like, orangish, reddish envelope the size of this, like, turntable thing here, and I said it and addressed it to um, the operations manager at the time, Shadow Stevens, and I said, Dear Mr. Stevens, I would like to work at your radio station one day. Could you please give me a written critique? And I put my cassette in a uh, return, with a return stamp for the critique. The next day I get a call. Now, I'm back home now after the Willamette that gained about 20 stations, other yeah, after station, 20 stations after that defeated, wondering what the hell I'm gonna do, should I continue off my radio career, etc. And I walk in one day, and my father, who's pretty much the Brooklyn, the Brooklyn type Archie Bunker, he goes, "Yeah, you got a call from one of your friends." I'm like, "One of my friends? Yeah, some idiot. One of your idiots. He's got to be an idiot. He's got one of those stupid names." I'm like, "What's his name?" Now I happen to know that the operations manager at that time was Shadow Stevens. My father goes, "Spook Stevens." <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, Spook Stevens. I, I did send a tape over for a critique, but that was yesterday. And I'm thinking maybe Stan, who I told, might have like, you know, called up to play a joke on the house looking for me. Yeah, tell him Shadow Stevens called. <laughs> I eventually uh, go into Z100 the first time to do part-time in 1984-ish, I want to say. I was literally like, you know, pretty much fresh out of high school for the most part. You know, I worked at a bunch of radio stations, this one for two weeks, this one for a day. WMYK, one day, one show. Cousin Brucey, who works for us now, I worked for his stations for two weeks. I didn't like, uh, I didn't like Middletown, New York. It was kind of scary. They had ponytails over there. The guys. I eventually get the job because I walk in and I'm so naive. I sit down in a suit and tie with my legal pad ready for my critique in person. And, you know, looks at me and goes, yeah, whatever. And I'm thinking, okay, where's my critique? He doesn't say anything to me except, quote, you look like a pretty fucking decent humanoid. He throws a packet of, he throws a packet at me that says, how to be a Z100 DJ at me, and says, you're on the Sunday at midnight. I'm like, what? I'm on Sunday at midnight? How the fuck is this possible? sleeping on my father's couch after being shut down from the health department with like fleet infestation. And now all of a sudden I'm like doing like an overnight show that was then the number one radio station in New York. How does this happen? How is this happening? So I went with it. Of course I just was scared shitless. I played along. I was like, oh yeah, cool. I knew I was in the interview. I had no idea. First uh, song I played there was What's Love Got To Do It from Tina Turner. <laughs> They were pretty progressive for their time. It wasn't like uh, what was happening now with the, uh, with the, you know, the automation and stuff like that. Um, they had carts, six cart decks that would, that would loop. They'd put a tone on all the songs. You can literally go one, two, three, four, five, six. And um, you had to, it was, it was, they made you do the actual segues, but they had the tones on the end of the songs just in case, you know, bathroom break. <laughs> <laughs> 